frame and see if I'm actually in the frame. I am. Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from the Chris Voss Show.com. The Chris Voss Show.com. Hey, we're coming here with another great podcast. We certainly appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, be sure to refer the show to your friends, neighbors, relatives, dogs, cats, everyone else you know. Tell them to go to iTunes, Google Play, Spotify. Holy crap, you can listen to us on Spotify right now. You can mix us up with Lawrence Welk Show, Metallica, Megadeth. Maybe some of that, uh, I don't know, that country music or something. And you can listen to Chris Voss show on Spotify. Wow. How about that? Uh, we have a most excellent guest today, Rob Brayman from Cogent Analytics today. And he's going to tell us about some of the things he does. He is a longstanding entrepreneur. He's personally responsible for the development and growth of three directly owned and successful startups. He brings a passion for the small to mid market segment of business. Mr. Brayman has spent 15 years working directly with business owners to improve strategic planning, operations, growth, and business development. Uh, welcome to the show, Rob. How are you? Good, Chris. Thanks for having me on today. Thanks for coming on today. And uh, so tell us about yourself, who you are, and, and uh, all that good stuff. So I, I used to tell everybody I was uh, the American gypsy. When I, was, uh, when I was a kid, I was the baby of four. And my father always had the philosophy that if you're willing to move, you're willing to move up. And by gosh, we moved a lot. So mm -hmm. I <laughs> go ahead. He, he was in the military. He wasn't. I was a corporate brat. So we, oh. uh, Indiana, Kentucky, Indiana, Kentucky, Wisconsin, Texas, Brazil, South America for five and a half years, oh. back to New Jersey. And then I graduated high school. So went went to college for a little bit. Decided I was going to join the military, and then I then the fun really started. I could got a chance to be in Africa, the Middle East, Central America. So I am. Uh, well, if I so to say that I'm well traveled, I've been in the state of North Carolina for the last 15 years. So I've raised my kids. I've planted some roots. Um, I love North Carolina, and um, you know, at the end of the day, I have found that the you know the journey called life. Uh, it has taught me a lot of lessons along the way, but my passion really is for the American entrepreneur. There you go. Being an entrepreneur, starting businesses, all that sort of good stuff. You started three different companies. What's so uh, this is four. You this is number four. You can coaching analytics so people can take a look at it. Um, so you can go to www.cogentanalytics.com, cogentanalytics.com. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, sign up for our newsletter, r look at their client testimonials, watch some of the videos. I think you'll get a really good sense of the American business owner we represent every day. And, and it's a pretty wide swath of American business. We have a, a division in our company is for startups to about that $2 million range, you know, 10 employees, $2 million. Mm -hmm. And then we have a whole nother segment of our firm that really represents from about 2 million to 200 million. So the dynamics in each one of those organizations uh, might be different, but I really started that incubator group because I think that the greatest challenge for the American entrepreneurs when they first open the door, you know, your highest fail rate for entrepreneurs is in the first three years, first five years of business. You know, it's a ridiculous fail rate. You know, people go in, they're undercapitalized. They don't have enough money to, to pay the bills. And most people that start a business have a passion for what they do, but they're undercapitalized, right? They don't, they didn't know what it was going to take them to build their business and and having to have receivables and becoming the bank of Rob Brayman. You know, those are some of the lessons I learned back in my early 20s. Um, those are the kind of people I try to help today. You know, I've been on that journey now for, oh, good Lord, I'm almost afraid to give this number 20, 25, 26 years. Um, it, it, suffice to say, I'm, I'm well worn and well traveled, Chris. <laughs> There you go. There you go. It sounds like my sex life. Oh, I don't know what that means. Um, so, <laughs> so you've started three different companies. You started Cogent Analytics. It looks like you guys are an Inc. 500 listed company. Yeah, twice. Actually, we just got it for the second year in a row. And I and uh, based on our numbers, I think we'll hit it next year, although I'll have to wait until, until that jury comes in. They usually announce in August, um, but we've made it two years in a row. Uh, and they use they look at a history of growth. You know, the thing about Inc. is that it's a growth only metric. We're in 22 different states. Um, by the end of 2022, we'll be in all 50 states in America. We have a number of clients that are wanting us to cross borders. 
Mm -hmm. I've always said that you got to stay home first and allow your company to mature. It's like a fine bottle of wine, Chris, right? You serve it too early and it just doesn't, it just isn't good for anybody. Yeah. So I like, I like to be patient. I like to be strategic. I like to make sure I'm representing my clients the very, very best. You know, people have asked me over the years, Rob, how big do you want to get? Or they'll ask me how fast you want to get there. And to be honest with you, I don't care about either of those things. Cogent Analytics will get as big as it's supposed to be to be a great consultancy, and it will get there only as fast as a great consultancy can get there. Because in my line of work, I represent American families. I represent people, and if if I'm chasing the dollar instead of chasing the you know chasing after how to make it right by the client, then my morals and my values are screwed up. So I, I like to believe that that we're going to do it strategically. We're going to do it because we have a passion for representing the American small business owner, the entrepreneurs out there and the people that fight the fight every day. You know, there's a lot of hardship that goes in with owning a business. And, and I feel like we're a resource. We want to be that third leg of the stool. You got your account, you got your attorney and you got your business advisor. And I think that's where we shine most importantly, because we care. That's what, that's where, if you ask me later in our discussion, Hey Rob, what sets you apart? It's because my values are really simple. It's honor, courage, wisdom, faith, perseverance, and loyalty. And that, that goes back to my days in the military and it's carried me into business. And, and, I, and I'm a believer. You know, I'm, I'm, I always say I'm Don Quixote, Chris. <laughs> You're chasing windmills. And <laughs> That's just sometimes, man, sometimes. That's sometimes how it feels when you're an entrepreneur. So you guys are a consultant-based business. You guys uh, consult mm -hmm. with businesses to help them achieve their goals and success. You guys do strategic planning uh, according to your website, profit engineering, sales performance improvement, exit and succession planning, business leadership, organizational engineering, uh, procedural systems, and reporting systems as well. Yep, value. value. You can add valuations to that. You can add IT managed services. We've got a great strategic partner that we work with, you know, something as simple as restructuring financial statements all the way through complex strategic planning, market position, margin management, you know, product distribution and dif distribution channels. So, you know, from its most simplistic, hey, we got to get you off the ground problem to the very complex, you know, the thing I'm proudest about in four and a half years, we've grown from six people to almost 130. We're, we're too shy of 130, so I'll say 128. Wow. And, and in that group, we've got you know, a team filled with experience, masters in business, PhDs, accountants, attorneys, people that have, have embraced what it is that I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. And work really, really hard in that vein. And that's hard to do for any small business owner out there is, number one, grow. But more importantly, putting the right people in the right chairs. And in that case, I think I've been, you know, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. But I'd say we were both because we've worked really, really hard at making sure that if we're going to represent a client that I've got the highest level of talent to be able to make sure we're doing it the right way. That definitely is uh, something you need in business. You need a little bit of luck. You need a little bit of uh, uh, hard work, and uh, hopefully everything, <laughs> hopefully everything comes out the other end just fine. It goes down. Well, I, I'm an energizer bunny. You know, I, and my wife marvels occasionally. We've been together for 24, going on 25 years, and um, yeah, I got two beautiful kids. We've raised them both are in college. Well, my young my young son is going to go to Virginia is at Virginia Military Institute. He's going to serve in the military after my daughter's going in engineering. Um, you know, in that case, I've been blessed that uh, I work my heart out every single day, I think, in service of others. And, you know, that if you don't worry about the dollar, but you worry about the purity of what you're trying to accomplish, sometimes when you're tired, it allows you to fight one extra inch, you know, one extra, one extra yard, one extra mile. And, um you know, I'll go back to what I said to you before, when you're representing other people, if you're not willing to go all in, uh, you know, you got to check your, you know, you got to check yourself in the mirror before you wreck yourself. You know what I mean? Right before you wreck. Yeah, that's right. That's also my Tinder profile. Um, <laughs> you know you're going to have to explain, you're going to explain this. I'm going to, you know, you got to explain the Tinder profile, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a good reference. I don't know. People are like, we need to see his Tinder profile. So you, how long have you guys been doing Cogen Analytics? 
April 22nd will officially be five years. Wow. Um, I, I have um, put a lot of heart and soul into building the structure the right way. Mm -hmm. uh, I marvel sometimes that we're not quite five years old, you know, made the Inc. 5000 a couple times, made the Inc. Made the Inc. 500 two years ago, but it's a growth metric. So unless you're just growing at, at, a, at light years pace, I'm happy with the 5000 because that means I'm managing my growth. It's a nice ego pin on the wall if that's important to anybody out there to, to say, hey, I, you know, I was in the Inc. 500 top. 500 yeah. fastest it's growing company companies in the country. Yeah. Um, you know, all of that stuff doesn't really matter at the end of the day. And I tell my team, it's a cool thing that hangs on the wall that everybody takes some joy out of. But, you know, all that says to me is that we did, we went through a lot of blood, sweat and tears and a lot of, you know, a lot of hard work to get to the point where, where we're focused on the people that we represent. And that's the passion. You stay home you stay what you're true to and things tend to work out. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's great to be recognized in that way uh, in any way, really uh, at being successful. Um, you know, it's, there's so many people that work really hard and, and they don't achieve success or, or they work really hard and they fail. I mean, that's definitely a, an aspect of the business of, of, um, of, of taking in and uh, starting your own business. I mean, the, the pension for being able to fail where you have, um, you know, 99% of businesses fail in the first two years is huge. I mean, the eight, eight, eight out of 10. Mm -hmm. And and here's a crazier statistic that most people don't add on to the back end of that. Eight out of 10 businesses, small business owners fail in the first five years of business, right? Mm -hmm. the, the funny part about it is by 10 years of the remaining two, the ratio is just as bad, right? So if you've got 20% left and five years later, your fail rate is equally as high as it was in the first five years. That should tell you that you've got a really small percentage of people that do two things. One, ever make it past a million bucks mm -hmm. in annualized gross revenue. And two, that make it past 10 years and build a healthy growing company. Now, my position to those people is Small business ownership is never about ego. It's about passion. It's about your skills. It's about what you're capable of doing. It's because you woke up one morning and said, I've got the skills to do something and I want to do it my way, which to me is the coolest thing in the world, right? Somebody who puts it out there on the line and says, I want to open my own company. The one cautionary tale is don't fly solo. Yeah. Right? You got to seek out people that you can trust that you can ask the tough questions, that you can get guidance because running a business, the actual science of running a business is something just as important as what you do for a living, right? People get stuck because they hit those levels. You know, I would say the first level is somewhere around a million bucks and then they scale their business to two, $3 million and they start to feel all the pain of not having the right people, not having the right structure, not having the right systems. They're not managing profitability. Their their liquidity or cash flow. They're having a tough time making payroll. You know, on Friday, they're they're trying to offer benefits to their people, but but they can't because they can't afford it. Now you're getting into the science of business, right? That gets into how you're selling, the people you've building on your team, the operations, and how efficient you are at bringing your product to market. And then the control structures you have in place, all four of those things are critical to managing profitability when you're a small business owner. And it's not a solo game. A lot of people go into business today and they fly solo, not looking for somebody that they can get and use as a resource. And they cap themselves off. They don't perform to the ability that they can perform. And what I believe is we push them through. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's painful, but that's OK. Change is always painful. The idea is to make you healthy, to make you better, to make you profitable, because your business is, you know, for any entrepreneur that's ever done it, a business is a wealth creation vehicle. That mm -hmm. doesn't mean you're it doesn't mean you're greedy. It doesn't mean, you know, you're going to you're going to whore out the process. You know, it's all about me, me, I, me. It, it really is about protecting your investment. It's the number one investment you'll have in your life. God bless. It'll fund your retirement. It'll pay for your kid's education. It will take care of secession if you want your kids to come in the business. So you've got to honor 
the structure called your business every day. And that's a pretty tough journey. So, you know, that's where I think we come in. Definitely. And the, uh, it's, it's a hell of a thing when it comes to making businesses and growing them. And, and of course, when they become successful, you know, I, I, I think the biggest problem that everyone thinks about when they're going to be successful in business is that once their business starts making, you know, multi-millions of dollars and, you know, they're making plenty of money in the bank and stuff that everything becomes easier. <laughs> oh no, quite the contrary. <laughs> quite the contrary. <laughs> Comes a lot harder, you know. You get more employees, and those employees have problems, and and uh, you know. You, you want to you hear a crazy story, Chris? All just in a, in a, in a, you know, this this thing where you're just spinning more and more plates, trying to keep the whole thing going. So you want to hear a crazy story? You just said something interesting there. You said, you know, when you grow the business, and all of a sudden you're doing millions of dollars, and you're making. That's a first off, it's a fallacy. Most small business owners that we represent are between three and 30 million, right? We get the low and we get the high. I've really built this incubator group to manage and help people get off the ground. But, but I have countless numbers of stories that we could sit here and talk all day about a $5 million business. He's had it for 10 years. He's paying himself 125, maybe 150. He's never taken a distribution from his company other than to pay his or her taxes, right? So really what he's got there is he bought himself a job, you know, and now you get into the discussion about if, if you got to pay back your debt and you got to pay the government in the form of tax, if you're not optimizing every single aspect of your business, there's never going to be anything left over for you until you sell it, right? Yeah. You got a $5 million business. Now you're going to get five times multiple to sell your business. Well, if you're not as profitable as you can be, that affects your retirement program. If you're not as profitable as you can be, you don't get to take distributions other than paying Uncle Sam or paying back, you know, paying back the government. That's the really hard story that I see every single day for the last 16 years of my life is I look at small business owners fighting the fight every day and not maximizing their opportunity. And it has a profound impact on the way they take care of their family, you know, pay for, for care for their parents when they get older. You know, those are, there's a lot of burdens you know, sometimes it's easier to have a job than it is to own a company. And and if I were to caution anybody about starting a business, go into it with eyes wide open, right? Understand you got to manage the controls and the financials of the business. Understand that what you do can turn into a very profitable journey, mm -hmm. but you got to respect the science of business. You know, I always tell the laughable story. I didn't go out. I didn't go out in the garage one day and chip away at the granite wheel walk inside and say, look, mom, the wheel, you know, I've tried to perfect the, the system called business and work with other people to help them get that same place. So sorry, I, I didn't mean to ramble. No, that was awesome. I mean, you're, you're correct in there, there. There is a science to it and it's very detailed. It's very broad. It's very lengthy. It's, it's not as simple as, you know, like you say, just making a widget and selling it. There's definitely a lot more to it than that. And, and, um, uh, and, uh, and I imagine that's a lot of what your consulting firm does in helping people understand uh, some of the different aspects they're missing or some of the different things that they need to fill in the blanks to be able to be successful. I'm a diehard believer that profit is something that you engineer, mm -hmm. right? Profit, profit happens because you make it happen. It's not a residual. It's not like you go to work every day and you work 90 hours a week or 60 hours a week and that you get to open your financial statement once a month and it's like, you know, holy cow, we made some money. You know, a financial statement is there to help you make better decisions, help you manage your cash flow, make a determination of where you're going to invest in, in capital expenditures, whether that's equipment or, or being able to invest back in the structure. Maybe you might want to buy a new building. You know, the, the adventure of small business owners has got to be strategic. You know, I, I watch a lot of people. I've saved a lot of people over the years that great idea, a lot of heart, definitely vested in what they do and they get off the ground and they didn't, they didn't take into consideration. Okay, well, how are we really going to go to market? How are we going to turn it into something profitable? And I, I've got a client this week that he's had that business for 20 years. In the last five years, he's never made more than 1% profit. 
Wow. And I want you to think about that. A $5 million gift business making 1% profit for all of his hard work and effort. He made 50 grand. Jesus. Right. 20 years. That's 20 years. Crazy. Pay, pays himself about a hundred and a quarter because that's what he, he can't afford to give himself a pay raise. I yeah. know you have listeners right now listening to this show that are saying to themselves, Holy cow, that's me. I'm yeah. feeling that pain every day, but they're not going to punch a jack. And you don't right. want to go 20 years. That. Holy shit. <laughs> well, but it's, you know, business, business is the journey, right? Sales are up, sales are down. Margin is up, margins down. I lost an employee, key guy, missed my sales. I've got people creating headaches for me. Can't get product. I got too much product. I got too much inventory. I got not enough inventory. I can't get my product to market. Oh my God, I lost my distributor. That is what your audience, your business owners that are out there listening today, that's the fight called small business. And there isn't a person that goes into business that ever wants to close the door. I've never met that person. Never <laughs> met the person that said, I went into business so I could figure out how to fail. My message is fail fast, learn quickly, and figure out that there's an opportunity to be successful, but you got to create it. You know, the one thing I've always seen in business, you tell me what you think in your experience, because uh, I'd love to compare notes. But the one thing I always, the, the main thing I always seen with failures is business is they always go into business with this model that they set up when they start and they run that fucker right into the ground. Like they just, they just keep on going and they don't ever think about getting out of that model until they're pretty much bankrupt. And by then they're like, well, maybe we should change this. <laughs> that's, that's very true. That's, that's usually what I see in a lot of business failures. They, I, I want to catch them before they fall. The model is when the game's over and they're out of cash. Worst part about it is, and I, and because I live it every day, the worst part about it is when they're robbing Peter to pay Paul. So it's not just that they're out of cash right now. They've spent through because they don't manage cash flow correctly. You know, they've already put their house on the line. They've signed personally and severally to the bank. So they don't just lose the business. They lose the business and end up filing bankruptcy personally and corporately. Right. Because for years they've been, you know, violating the arm's length transaction rule. And all of a sudden they don't they don't quit. Nobody stops them to say, man, you've got you've got problems right now. We need to change course. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many clients we'll talk to on the phone and I'll get the I got it speech. And then they'll call me back six months later and say, man, I really need your help. <laughs> and by the time they really ask for help, it's like. Okay, so six months ago when I said we really need to start this process now, yeah, you know, we we bled a turnip six months later. Be yeah. pro be proactive, be aggressive. If if you have a question, don't feel like you got to figure it out on your own, right? Yeah. There are people that care. There's people that are willing to do the right thing, you know. It, it, consulting world, right? My world, consultants have a, a tough brand, mm -hmm. right? But before I started coaching, and I'll just tell you why I started the firm, I worked for another firm that just my personal beliefs didn't align. Now, I did it for a lot of years with this other firm. Mm -hmm. And I tried to change that company from within that company. And, you know, that was to no avail. So when I finally decided that I was going to do this, I said, you know, if I'm going to, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it based on my belief. And I will tell you that that you know, the firm I used to work for literally changed their name probably six to somewhere between six and 11 times, depending on how you count, Be because at the end of the day, they had built a re reputation that made them run away from their own brand. My simple context is if you're going to represent people, you better be proud as hell of the brand that you're building and you better honor the clients you represent because they're the ones that make that brand better. And you know, I know that there's a reputation in the consulting industry and I, and I don't care. I feel like if I do the right, if I fight the right way every single day that I'm going to build a brand and it doesn't matter what everybody, yeah, may, there may be some selling pressure out there. There may be some pressure from clients who are a little reticent to bring in somebody else because they say, oh, I've seen that story or my buddies saw that story. I'm here to tell you that's not the case. There are good people in this world that care. There's good people that you can reach out and look for assistance. I don't like to use the word help, right? I mean, I was, 
I spent the beginning of my life with in a special forces group. So I, I'm not much of a help me, help me guy. I'm more like a hand up than a hand out. Um, people need assistance, but you can't, you can't help the unwilling. I've told clients over the years, consulting is not a function of coming in and having somebody do something to you. Consulting is a function of finding the right partner that's willing to work with you to teach, educate, motivate, be the impetus of change, give you the tools that you need to make better, get you to the point where you embrace it and make yourself better. But at the end of the day, you built this business. It's your company. You're responsible for it. If you want to make it better, I'm willing to assist, but not until, right? So we have a rule internally. We believe that every dollar that a client, when we work with a client, you know, whether it's a a little project or a big project. I'm not going to use numbers on today's show, but every single time we have two metrics that we adhere to. One, Cogent Analytics has to pay for itself. We do a discovery with a client and we want that discovery to be a deliverable where a client can literally turn over every rock. I used to call it peeling the onion. You want a client to be able to go through that discovery process and identify the challenges first. And we do that somewhere between 12 and 2400 bucks, depending on the size of your company. That to me is the most valuable thing we do is the discovery. Because if I take on a client and actually represent them, we only take on about half, right? Because if I don't see a clear return on investment for my clients, I'm just going to give them advice, shake a hand and say, you know what, as we continue to get better, reach out, we'll go through another discovery. This is the value. Mm -hmm. The second piece is, and, and, you know, we have a minimum of two to one. Most often we see four to one, five to one, six to one return. But here's the caveat. The number one thing that I hold my team responsible for is that the client has to be responsible for the problems first. It can't be us pushing them up a hill. It's got to be them charging up the hill and kind of us guiding them along the way. So that is that's why we're very careful about the clients that we represent, because they got to take ownership of it. And that's the best part of the story. Entrepreneurs do that the day they open the door. It, it definitely is uh, something that, that that needs to go down that way. Um, years ago, when we had our uh, little uh, bunch of companies, we used to loan out money. And usually we were cherry picking. We were looking for uh, different things that we could take over. Usually people were cash poor but asset rich. I kind yep. of learned how to do it from some of my business brokers. Um, and so we would uh, offer loan out money to people and businesses, look for businesses we could white knight or take over. Or if we could fold them into our companies, we'd do that. Um, and invariably, I'd find businesses that we were either willing to loan money to or take over, but the entrepreneur just wouldn't give up. The entrepreneur would somehow see our interest as like, well, there's a way to make this work. And I'd be like, look, you're 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 bankrupt now. It's just you just haven't figured it out yet. Uh, and some businesses that we get really interested in, we give them a first right of uh, we give them a contract with a first right of refusal to where we'd have them call us when they were ready to either sell or uh, give up their business or turn it over to us, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, really smart. I like it. It, it was kind of smart, but what was interesting about it was is, I, and and there were some people I'd go in and just be honest, uh, cold, and, and sometimes they'd be so thick in the head uh, and so locked in to be an entrepreneur uh, and, and I have to be like, look, you're not, you're not cut out for this. Number one, you don't, I don't think you have, you have what it takes for this. And number two, you don't have the money. You, you've taken the model and you've run into the ground. Uh, I think you have some assets that we can utilize or fold into our businesses, but you know, you've, we're going to give you walking money and we're going to pay you're you. Safe. And we're going to take over your shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and because there just was no point in these people had no business being in our, our business, even as a front level employee sometimes. <laughs> it's like you can answer phones for us. Um, and, but what was funny was we give, we give these first right of refusal contracts and we pay them like a dollar or something, you know, 10 bucks, whatever. Um, and uh, they, would, they would go by about four to six months on average with these first right of refusals. And they would call me up one day and they they had ignored everything I told them and they had run that thing deeper into the ground. Even farther in the ground. That's right. And I would I would tell them too when we'd sign the agreement, I'd say, 
look, don't call me one day before you're ready to file bankruptcy. Don't call, I can't save you then. I might be able to save it now. I might be able to save your creditors. You know, businesses that we did took over, we could get on the phone with their creditors that they were behind with and say, hey, we know the lease is behind. We know their payments are behind. We're taking yep. the company. It'll be caught up soon. Give us a week or two to get, you know, all the transition. Yep. And uh, they'd be, you know, usually the, you know, whoever the landlord was or whoever they owed money to, it'd be like, oh, thank God. Thank God. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Some money. <laughs> um, but uh, and then a lot of times we could go in and do deals. We could we could, you know, say to a landlord, hey, this is great. The rent's awesome. But, you know, we have another building. If you want to make a deal with us, we know they're we'll behind. The money, but, uh, you know, we, we work it out. Um, and, uh, so it, it ended up being good for that, for when we did make deals, but, but man, a majority of these six month, uh, first right refusals we do, they would call us the day before bankruptcy and we'd just be like, no, we can't, we can't save you now, man. You, you've run that sucker into the ground. You just for help a long time ago. You know, my world works, just, although I've learned over 16 years that, you, you, you ever see the movie The Guardian, right? Kevin Costner, he's the he's the uh, this rescue I, swimmer. No, isn't that where he's the he takes care of uh, the one singer, the Coast Guard, yeah. right? He's the he, well, no, that I, I know what you're talking about. The, the oh, Guardian a, was about. I'm not a big was, guy. Yeah, he was a rescue swimmer for the Coast Guard. There was one line in that movie where he says, you know, there was a whole big about how many saves, and it was based on a true story, by the way. But he said, you know, I swim as hard and as I and as fast as I can, and I save them one at a time, and to, and the sea takes the rest. You know, I I listen to your story there, and I, and I'm I'm going through all the stories I've got in my head of clients that I've tried to help along the way, and I and I've learned to flush them over the years because I know that there is a never ending supply of really really good people. Mm -hmm. that really, really need the help and are willing. I mean, I, I had a, I had a client last week, man, they're, they're not at bankruptcy and they were proactive. They said, you know what? We've done it our way for about the last eight years. We grew really fast. We over got over the tip of our skis, but it was a husband, wife, a son and a disassociated partner, but they were all like family and they were, they were fully vested. I mean, they had everything in this business and the best part of the story when you get to the end of a really honest discussion with folks like that, and they don't, they don't guess, they don't wonder. They, it's not about ego. It, it's about, holy cow, this is my life, and I'll be damned if I'm going to let that thing go sideways. So I've reached the point where I need to talk to somebody that can help me through these this landmine called business ownership. Mm -hmm. And if I could say one thing to your audience. Again, it's not a it's not a solo flight. You know, there you, you just got to be careful. Do your due diligence. Vet the people that you're going to ask their opinion. Make sure that they know what they're talking about. Make sure they're not trying to fill their pockets out of your last dollar. Yeah, because I see a lot of that. Right. Make sure they're not trying to fill their pockets on your last dollar. Right. Yeah find a group and I obviously I'm, I'm I'm prejudiced right I think that we're the one group out there that does that every day so but I know there's a lot of really good advisors all over America and you got to you got to make sure that the right person shares your values they care about what they're doing it really is about your success before their own because you know it, the purity of what we do and I tell my people this all the time you know, it should never matter when you get the next one because you're always going to get the next one. What should matter is that you represented that client for the time, whether that was three days or three months, you do your level best every single day and the rest of it takes care of itself because then you can look yourself in the mirror in the morning and know you gave it your all, right? I got a, I got a saying around this place that says, you know, we're going to strive for perfection every single day knowing it is an unachievable goal in the hopes that we achieve excellence. And I know that may sound corny to you, but that's our life. You know, that's yeah. what we do every day. Well, I think it's an important acumen to point out too, because some people say we're going to be perfect and there is no such thing as perfect. No such thing. Um, you'll get a lot closer trying than you will by not. You Amen, know? brother. Yeah, definitely. So uh, as I, I, we could talk forever about entrepreneurs, it's been great having you on the show. Give us your plugs one more time so we can have uh, people take a look at your guys' website and ask for help before you need it. I think that's the lesson we've learned today in our discussion. 
Yeah, so we did something really cool the last podcast I did is we put out to the audience that, you know, we've set aside, you give us a ring and we'll do a full two to three day discovery, peel the onion, figure out what's going right and what's going wrong in your business. I hope that we find more right than wrong, but we're always going to turn the stones over. But we'll do a full two to three day discovery with any client that calls in, sends us an email, www.cogenanalytics.com. We'll do that for 1200 bucks, right? My professionals, go do your due diligence on us. Look at my people, look at my team, listen to other clients, tell their story, read the testimonies. I got hundreds of testimonies. We got 70, 75 videos out there. You know, listen to the story. If that's you, when you hear that story, send me a note, send it to me personally. And I will make sure I personally call you and we set up a discovery with your company because you've got some small business owners listening today mm -hmm. that are going through some challenges. I'm Rob Brayman. I'm the CEO, senior partner of Cogent Analytics. I'm passionate about the American small business owner. If you heard something today that speaks to your gut, I would love to have that conversation. I don't want to, I don't want to get into it on your show today, but let's have an honest conversation about what challenges you're faced. And I think that if, if I earn the right, then we'll figure out how we open that dialogue a little farther. Sounds awesome. I love the way you think, Robert. And that's a great deal for our uh, audience too, as well. So be sure to go to cogentanalytics.com and uh, yeah, get to know Rob some more. I mean, definitely some great advice there in how to do your business well. Anyway, thanks for tuning in to, to our audience. Uh, thanks to Rob for being on. We appreciate you being on today. Uh, be sure to give us a like, subscribe to us on youtube.com forward slash Chris Voss. Hit that bell notification button so you get all the notifications of the shows, everything we're doing. Plus, there's all the reviews of all the great products from at and on down to Harmon Card and JBL. We'll be doing for Christmas. You can figure out what you want to have on your list for Christmas or what you want to give to somebody for Christmas. And also, you can see the great Husky videos there as well. Uh, be sure to go to uh, iTunes and Google Play. Tell your friends to go there and subscribe, and Spotify as well. Thanks, Rob, for being on the show. Chris, awesome experience. I love the I love the nature of this conversation. It's one of the best, just flat out one of the best podcasts I've had since I've started this little adventure. I, en I enjoy the tempo and I enjoy the dialogue, brother. I break greatly appreciate you having me on. Sounds good. We'll have you on again, too, because we could talk forever. So we'll do this in hour segments. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I love it. Thanks, Rob. Take care. Thanks, my audience. And we'll see you guys next time.